Welcome to question 8 of the 2018 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solutions to this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 8 we have let p hat be the random variable that represents the sample proportions of customers who bring their own shopping bags to a large shopping centre. From a sample consisting of all customers on a particular day, an approximate 95% confidence interval for the proportion P of customers who bring their own shopping bags to this large shopping centre was determined to be the following interval. For part A, we're asked to find the value of P hat that was used to obtain this approximate 95% confidence interval, where P hat is the statistic for the sample proportion. So we can just acknowledge that if we have a confidence interval that is L a lower bound and U an upper bound, so they are the two bounds of the confidence interval, then we have P hat is going to be centered in the middle of those two values. So we can find it by going L plus U divided by two. So for our interval, we have P hat would then equal a half, and then we would add the two numbers together. So we would have four, eight, five, three divided by 50,000 plus 5147 divided by 50,000 and that's going to equal one half times and if you add those two things together we get 10,000 divided by 50,000 and when we simplify that down that's simply going to be 5,000 over 50,000 which is 1 over 10. So the p hat value that was used to obtain this confidence interval was 1 tenth or 0 0.1. For part B, we're going to use the fact that 1.96 equals 49 on 25 to find the size of the sample from which this approximate 95% confidence interval was obtained. So if we represent our confidence interval as a line, we'd previously found that the p hat value was 5,000 over 50,000 and that the upper bound was 5,147 on 50,000 and that the lower bound was 4,853 on 50,000. And we know that the distance between our p hat value and either one of the lower or upper bounds, so this distance here, is simply going to be equal to the z score times the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n. And by inspecting the numbers that we have on this interval, we can see that this length here, so half the width, is simply 147 divided by 50,000. So from what we just discussed before, that interval length of 147 divided by 50,000 would be equal to the 49 divided by 25, so the z value, times p hat, which is 1 over 10, times 1 minus p hat, which is 9 over 10, all divided by n, which is the sample size. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 25 divided by 49, and what that's going to do is get rid of this fraction out the front of the square root sign. So whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we multiply by 25 on 49. So therefore, we'll simplify this. So 147 divided by 49 will just leave 3 on the top line of that fraction and 25 divided by 50,000 would just leave 2,000 on the bottom of that fraction. Over on the right hand side, the 25 and 25 will cancel and the 49 and 49 will cancel, which will just leave the square root of, and one divided by 10 times nine divided by 10 is nine divided by 100. And then instead of dividing by n, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, which will make this the square root of nine divided by 100 n. Then we can continue to simplify, so we're going to have 3 divided by 2000 is equal to, and then the square root of 9 is simply 3, and the square root of 100 is 10, and then we'd have the square root of n still here. And next we could multiply both sides by 10 divided by 3, multiply by 10 divided by 3, so therefore we can simplify that, and the 3s would cancel, and the 10 would cancel with 1 factor of 10 in the denominator, which would just leave 1 divided by 200 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of n. So therefore, we have the square root of n is equal to 200, and squaring both sides, we'd get n equals 40,000. So that is the answer to part B of this question.